All right, so I'm still on a quest for the perfect web browser, but for the time being, I think I'm switching over to ungoogled Chromium. And in this video, I'm gonna be going over why I'm switching to this and also how to set it up to get the best experience. And so let's just go over what ungoogled Chromium is. So as you may already know, Chromium is a free and open source web browser that is used as a base for all kinds of different web browsers like Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, and all of the others pretty much. And so Chromium is a pretty similar experience to Google Chrome without all of the Google features and branding. And out of the box, Chromium is already pretty good for privacy and security. But the problem is it isn't perfect. That's because Chromium is developed primarily by Google. So of course, they're going to put a lot of features and a lot of callbacks to Google services and Google servers. There's a lot of things that just call back to Google in some way or another. And so ungoogled Chromium is exactly what it sounds like. It's just Chromium without all the Google Web Service dependency. And so you can feel safe in that nothing's getting reported back to Google because the less of my private information I can send to a giant mega corporation, the better. But you might be wondering what's the difference between this and say some other privacy focused Chromium based browsers. For instance, Brave is probably the most popular one right now. It is another privacy focused browser. But the reason I'm switching to ungoogled Chromium is just because this browser is going to just be as close to the original Chromium experience as possible. So with Brave, sure, you get some privacy protecting features, but you also get Brave's whole crypto gimmick, which I have never cared about. You have a whole bunch of features that you probably won't ever use, like it has a built-in Torn client. I don't know why it has this, but it does. And so I've been using Brave for a while, but I just didn't need all of the features that it had. So that's why I decided to take a look at ungoogled Chromium right here. Now do keep in mind that this is going to take a little bit of work to set up. So if you want to recommend a browser to one of your normie friends, I would still recommend Brave or Firefox because those are much easier to get set up. Because ungoogled Chromium, in their quest to remove all of the Google web services, uh, they end up breaking a few features. And so by default, you can't actually install extensions from the Chrome web store because that actually calls back to Google. And a few other features are just missing, so you will have to do a bit of work setting this up. But first things first, let's just go over how to install this. So we are on the ungoogled Chromium GitHub page. I will leave a link to this in the description. Let's go down to downloads. And if you're on Linux, you would go here and click on whatever distribution you're using, Arch, Debian, Fedora. They're all pretty similar, but let's go to this Arch Linux page right here. And all that you basically want to do is you want to add the open build service repository and you would do it by pasting in this command into your terminal. This will just add an additional repository and only then can you install it with your usual package manager. And so you would just run these commands in your terminal and that will all set up correctly. And I would really recommend adding this repository just so you don't have to build it yourself because you can build it yourself, at least on Arch Linux, it is in the AUR, but building it yourself does take a long time. It'll take hours and hours to build it yourself, and it will basically turn your computer into a toaster while it is building, so I wouldn't really recommend that. So I would go the path of adding this repository, and of course it's very similar instructions for Debian or Fedora. You would just click those. What you can also do is you can download a binary, which is the application that is already built. You can download them from here. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend these because these are just built by some random users on the internet that wanted to build them and distribute them here out of the goodness of their heart. But you're not 100% sure that they didn't do anything with these binaries. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend these. You can use these and you probably wouldn't have any issues, but just do know that there is a non-zero chance that they have been tampered with. But let's say that you have everything installed correctly. So you're gonna get something like this out of the box. But there are a few settings and things that you should change. Just because, like I said, out of the box, ungoogled Chromium does break a few things. So for example, you cannot install things from the Chrome extension store. So what ungoogled Chromium wants you to do is it wants you to manually download and install all of these add-ons. But there is a much easier way to do this, and that is with the Chromium Web Store extension. So this is basically a must have if you wanna have on Google Chromium, just because without this, you won't have automatic updates or anything like that. So I really recommend this. 
So this extension will basically just restore all of the functionality around extensions, but without relying on Google services to do it. So first things first, you will probably want to go into Chrome slash flags right here. And that's because you probably want to set this setting right here, handling of extension MIME type requests. So normally if you download an extension, it will just download it to your PC, but we wanted to open a little pop-up here that says, do you want to install this application? So you can do that by going to Chrome slash flags and searching for this handling of MIME type requests and setting this as always prompt for install. Save that. And now we can go back to here and we're going to install this by going to releases and clicking on a CRX right here. And it should pop up in a dialogue here asking you to add this. Let's add this extension and it has now been added. Let's just pin this right here because whenever it has a new update for one of these extensions, then it will have a little notification right here to, prompting you to update it. And of course, if you go back to the Chrome Web Store, then there will be a box right here where you can now add and remove from Chromium. So that makes handling extensions a lot easier. Another setting you might want to change out of the box, you can find in settings. And by default, ungoogled Chromium will delete all of your cookies after you close the browser, which you may not want. That could be a little bit annoying. It can be useful for some websites, but you probably don't want to have to re-log in every time you open up your browser. So you would just uncheck this option right here where it says clear cookies and site data when you close all windows. Let's uncheck that. And one more thing that is missing is Widevine CDM. If you don't know what this is, then it just allows you to access DRM protected content in your browser. Like for instance, you're not going to be watching Netflix out of the box on this because it is DRM protected. So you would want to install this called Widevine CDM in order to say watch Netflix and do other things that might be DRM protected. And so if you're on a Debian based distribution, then you would just follow these instructions right here. I'll leave a link to this as well. And of course it has instructions for Mac OS and Windows. Uh, for Arch Linux, you can get it in the AUR. It's going to be called Chromium-Widevine. And you want to install this from the AUR. And then you may need to chmod this file as well. If it's still not working for you, I had to do this as well. But once you're done with that, then you should be able to watch Netflix, do whatever you want with this. And finally, let's talk about dark mode. So by default is probably not going to have dark mode enabled. If you already have dark mode out of the box, then you can probably skip this section. But for me personally, I'm using a window manager. So what I had to do is I had to pass in a few flags in order for this to work. So first I made a file in my .local slash share slash applications folder called ungoogled chromium .desktop. I want to open this up and I just created this desktop entry right here. And this is saying whenever we start up Chromium, I want to pass in these additional flags. I want to pass in dash dash force dark mode. That is going to turn on the dark mode for all of this up here. And then also dash dash enable features web UI dark mode. That is going to make the settings pages and everything else dark mode as well. And there's just a few more other random flags that you can add. I had to disable top sites, which are the shortcut links. Whenever you open up a new tab, I didn't want those. So that's what I added. And now whenever you start ungoogled Chromium from your application launcher, then it will open with dark mode and all of those features enabled. So I do recommend that if you want to get dark mode. And there's a few other additional features that are not in the settings menu. Again, you would check flags right here and then search for some specific options if you want them. For example, by default, it's going to show you a bunch of useless buttons up here that you probably will never use. So for example, this user button, this right panel button that I really didn't want. So you would just add these in the flags. So if you want to turn the avatar off, we would click never. If you want to turn the side panel off, we would do this, relaunch it. And so some of these options are unique to ungoogled Chromium. That's why you need to come into Chrome slash flags and add them here. But if you're looking for some additional option that you can't find in the settings menu, then you may be able to find it in here. But that's about it when it comes to setting up ungoogled Chromium. Now you should have a browser that functions pretty much exactly how you would want it to. And it's going to protect your privacy, it's going to protect your security. And once you get this basic setup out of the way, then it is actually pretty easy to use. And one more resource is this FAQ page right here. 
If you have any additional questions or any other quirks that you want to figure out, then I would check this page and I'll leave a link to this in the description. But maybe your microphone isn't working, maybe your spell checker isn't working, maybe you want to Chromecast and you can enable or fix all of these options if you wish. But I'll leave that up to you. That is enough for this video. And so now you can have all the benefits of Chromium without all of the creepy tracking from Google. So if this looks interesting to you, give ungoogled Chromium a try and I think you'll enjoy it as much as I do.